What's going on, party people? It's Friday, and you know what that means. It's time for the 3D. My name is Drew Dickinson, coming at you every Friday afternoon right here on the SDH Network. Of course, the topic each and every week will be on my beloved Manchester United, who this weekend are back at Wembley in another FA Cup semifinal where they collide with Coventry City FC. Now, the Sky Blues, they currently sit eighth place in the EFL Championship, which is the second division of English football directly under the Premier League, where Manchester United currently sit seventh. And I just want to remind everyone, seventh tied with Newcastle at sixth, who's in sixth with 50 points, but the goal differential for United is absolutely atrocious. So that's how the the, the sixth place was awarded. Now, United, not only are they in sixth, uh, seventh place, excuse me, they are still chasing the those European spots. Of course, you have to remind in sixth place is Newcastle with 50 points. But the one team that United really need to start looking to chase is Tottenham, who currently sit fifth place with 60 points. Obviously, that fourth place spot is currently held by Aston Villa, who have 63 points. So it's a big ask, huge task, even to climb up to fifth. But I think it can be done. Now, back to this weekend. United, of course, there is a lot of history embedded into Manchester United when it relates to the FA Cup. Having appeared in the final 21 times, lifting the trophy 12, and that's only to, it's only second to Arsenal's 14 championships regarding the FA Cup. Most recently, United losing to Manchester City in the final just a year ago. So with that being said, it's been eight seasons since United's since they last lifted that coveted English trophy. May 21st, 2016, goals from Juan Mata and an extra time in the 110th minute to be exact. A young Jesse Messi Lingard scores the winner for United, and they went on to beat Crystal Palace 2-1. Of course, neither with us anymore. Lingard struggling for playing time in Korea, struggled with playing time for Nottingham Forest, struggled with playing time with West Ham when it came down to the wire. That one, you know, he played really, really well with them when Ole let him go on loan. But other than that, he really hasn't done much, and it just goes to show you that Marino was right. If, where, and when United players who leave United play, it's a big, you know, the, all those come into questions because where do they go after United? It's mostly because of the inflated salary and even more so the inflated ego. Now, when it comes to Juan Mata, he was a Manchester United Red Devil through and through. With his age, it was just time to go. He couldn't play the soccer that Ten Hag demanded. Well, not really any of the guys can now, but I digress. But anyways, now if you also remember that FA Cup where United went on to beat Crystal Palace 2-1 in the final, that was Louis van Gaal. He was the manager of United. And he was, remember, he was just sacked two days later, which ended up paving the way for the beginning of the Jose Mourinho era later that summer. Manchester United lifted their first FA Cup trophy in 1909, where they defeated Bristol City playing at Crystal Palace's home turf. Dennis Law, he has the club record for goals, scored in an FA Cup with 34. Now, all in all, in the FA Cup for Manchester United, they've played 320 games. They've won 197 of them. They drew 65, and they lost 58, and had an amazing plus 320 goal differential. Now, listen... Coming into Saturday, you know, I, 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 you know, was quasi joking, but I wasn't joking about, you know, you know, not knowing what Manchester United team is going to play because if they come in playing, you know, some of that lackluster soccer that we've known and to play the majority of this season. Listen, guys, Coventry lifted the freaking FA Cup in 1987. They beat Spurs three two. You know, although that's their only major trophy, 1987 seems you know forever ago, but it really wasn't. So. 
the underdogs in Coventry FC or Coventry City FC, excuse me, the underdogs in them, they've got something to fight for. So, you know, they're, they're, there's so much tradition, so much history waiting for us this this uh, Sunday at Wembley. You know, uh, Saturday uh, City and Chelsea play on 420. But it, it's it's always, always a good year, especially for Manchester United when they lift the FA Cup. Now, I said a good year. Haven't heard that much recently, or, or you know, haven't heard that saying much recently. You know, uh, United still being bit by the injury bug, uh, style of play uncertainty. You know, although Ten Hag says build from the back and counterattack, we 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 rarely see that. Only against top teams, they show up to play. So you know, also who's going to play where? Is the person playing where they're playing good enough? Are they even good enough for Manchester United? You know, on and on and on. I can go on about the, you know, the uncertainties right now with Manchester United. You know, I, I United have conceded more shots than any team in the Premier League this season. Uh, the space between the midfield and the back line, you know, continues to be shocking. And I'm sure Coventry, you know, they're keeping an eye on that. It's one place I guarantee you they will attack. Look at Bournemouth. They absolutely attacked that midfield, and then they were able to just slide through it within seconds, like they were earlier or in December when they beat United three nil. They, they they surely deserve to win this past weekend because it looked like only Bruno showed up to play. Another question: um, We saw Ten Hag. He handled the Garnacho situation from uh, last week as categorized as handled internally. Garnacho has since apologized, but does Garnacho start? Does he even play? You know, only time will tell on that. Again, so many uncertainties, even as far as the starting 11. So we'll go over my predicted starting 11. Andre Onana, a shoe-in, obviously in goal. Harry Maguire, shoe-in for center back spot with Evans, Lissandro Martinez, and Rafael Varane continuing to be out. So I assume, uh, even Lindelof, you know, no, no really up, I haven't really heard much about his status as it pertains to starting this week. And so I assume Willie Campwalla will start next to Maguire, who, who, mind you, Campwalla, bless his heart. He played so well against Liverpool, but he has to do better than his Bournemouth performance this weekend. I mean, just has to. And Diego Dallo, Diogo Dallo and Aaron Juan Bissaka will play as the fullbacks. And listen, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. It needs to be said. With his abysmal performance at the weekend, Casemiro should have a seat. Clearly, there's an issue. Maybe, to me, he doesn't look all the way fit. It's one of two things. He's not fit, or like I've been saying all season long, he aged 15 years over the summer. So what I'd like to see is I'd like to see Mason Mount next to Kobe Mainu and Bruno Fernandez slotted in front of him as that midfield three. Let's bloody see what Mason can finally do fully fit, lad, shall we? I mentioned Garnacho earlier. There's also uncertainty with Anthony and Rashford, who have been injured. So with all that being said, I expect, I still expect the front three of Rashford, Hoysland, and Garnacho. Maybe Ahmad gets the nod. Again, only time will tell with that. But I do believe United handle the Sky Blues, you know, with relative ease this weekend. Still, I, I still think it'll be 3-0. Remember, they've, they've only seemed to be able to get themselves up for big games this season. So I see Wembley FA Cup semifinal, no difference. It's just what happens when... You know, we'll, hold on, I'll talk about that in just a minute. But I do believe we will have a rematch of last year's FA Cup final with City being knocked out of Champions League this past week. They'll be hungry tomorrow, and they'll be ready to go against Chelsea. I think that game kicks at 12-15 tomorrow, ESPN+. Plus. Last June, City defeated United 2-1 in the final. So yes, I do believe it will be another Manchester derby in the FA Cup final in June of this year. I think this is a very important game for the future of Eric Ten Hag. I've said it before, and I believe that he's safe no matter what, but an FA Cup final and possibly sneaking back into Europe would solidify his safety. Next week, Manchester United will be back in Premier League action Saturday, April 27th, when they host Burnley. We will discuss that in next week's 3D. With all that being said, I think that's my new favorite thing to say. With that being said, that's going to do it for me today. 
Thank you all so much for listening. Thank you for joining wherever you may be. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. We will speak to you next week. All right. Take care.